Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to create a preloader animation for your website. First of all, let me show you how it looks. So I'll just refresh this page and we can see this loading animation. So we're going to create this preloader from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And then I'll also show you how to add this to your blogger website. In the previous video, I showed you how to create a preloader for your WordPress website using a plugin. So if you want to see that video, I will leave the link in the description below. Now in this video, we'll create everything from scratch. So let's get started. Alright, so here I have created this project called custom preloader and I'm using this code editor called Visual Studio Code. And I also have a folder called images where we have an image which we'll be using in our content. So first of all, let's create all the files. So let's click on new file and we'll create a file called index.html and we'll create one more file and we'll call it style.css and one more file for the JavaScript. We'll type main.js. Right now let's start with the index.html file and in VS Code you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll get this HTML5 boilerplate code. And uh, let's link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type link and press tab and style.css and we'll also link our uh, JavaScript file over here. So I'll just type script colon src tab and uh, main.js. Right now let's create a basic content for our web page. So I'll just create a division with the class of content and uh, in the content we will have an h1. I'll just type title of the post and we'll create some paragraphs. So in VS Code you can just type lorem and type the number of words you want. So I'll just type 30 and uh, it will have a paragraph of random text for that number of words. So I'll just copy this and paste it some more times. And we'll also have an image. So let's add an image over here. So I'll just type IMG and uh, we have the image in the images folder and it is called image1.jpg. Alright, so now let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called live server installed on VS Code. So here we can see, you can just search for live server over here and just install it. After that, you can just go ahead and right click and click on open with live server. And here we can see, we have the title of the post, we have the paragraph, the image and the rest of the paragraph over here. All right now let's create the markup for our preloader. Let's go outside the content division and here we'll create a division and we'll give it a class of preloader. And in the preloader we will have a division called backdrop which will have the black background color for our preloader. So I'll just create a division with a class of backdrop. And then we'll create a division for the dots that we'll be animating. So let's create a division with a class of dots container. And in that we'll create three dots. So we'll just create a division with a class of dot. And I'll just duplicate it two more times. Alright, so that's it with the dots. Now let's create the text. So we'll create a division with a class of preloader text. And in that we will type loading dot dot dot. Alright, that's basically it with the markup of our preloader. And if we go back to our website and let's scroll down and here we have the loading text displayed over here and all the other items that we have in the preloader, we have to style them to be able to see in our website. So now let's go to our CSS and let's start styling the page. Or right, so let's start with the body. So we just have body and for the body, we will give a font family of Roboto and sans serif and we'll also give a background color to the body. And then for the content, we will have a white background color. So let's type content and we'll set the background color to white. And we'll set the width to 800 pixels. And we'll also set a padding of 32 pixels. And we'll set a margin of 24 pixels top and bottom. And for the left and right, we'll type auto so that it will be in the center. We'll just change the width to max width. So now we can see that we have a max width of 800 pixels. So now if I just maximize this, we can see that we have a max width of 800 pixels. Right now for the paragraph, we will have a line height. So I'll just type body P and we'll set a line height of two. Now these are just basic styles for the content, not for the preloader so that it just looks nice. Right now let's decrease the width of this image. So just type content and IMG and we'll set the width of the image to 100%. 
right now we can see that everything looks all right now let's start with the preloader so let's create a comment and we'll type preloader so let's type preloader and for the preloader we will have a width of 100 percent and we will set a fixed position for the preloader so it will cover the entire screen so let's type position fixed and I will set the width to 100 percent and uh, we'll set the height to 100 viewport height and we'll set the background color to 0F0F0F and let's set the left position to 0 and the top position to 0 All right now we can see that our preloader is covering the whole website All right now let's style the text so let's type preloader and we'll type preloader text and for the text we will have a color of 838383 and uh, we'll bring it to the center so here for the preloader we'll type display of flex align items to the center and justify content to the center and let's add some more styles to the text so we'll type text transform to uppercase and uh, we'll set a letter spacing of 8 pixels and uh, we'll also set the font size to 15 pixels all right now let's style the dots so let's target that over here we'll just type preloader dot and uh, here we will just give a background color of red for now and we'll set the width to 20 pixels and the height to 20 pixels and uh, let's also set a border radius of 50 percent so that it will have a round shape and we want all the dots to be one next to the other so we will target the dots container which is the parent division of the dots so let's type preloader dots container and we'll type display of flex and for the parent element of this which is the preloader we will have a flex direction of column because even for the parent we have a display of flex so everything is one next to the other so here we'll type flex direction to column All right now let's add a little bit of margin bottom to the dots container so we'll just type margin bottom we'll set it to 48 pixels All right now let's have some space between each of these dots so let's type margin and zero for the top and bottom and five pixels for left and right All right that looks all right now let's have different colors for each of these dots so for that let's go ahead and add some new classes to our dots so let's go back to our html and if you scroll down here we have three divisions for the dots now we'll add one more class for each of the dots so for the first one we will have a class of red and for the next one we will have a class of green and for the last one we'll have a class of yellow now let's target these classes and color them accordingly so let's go ahead and type preloader dot dot red and uh, we'll set the background color to ef476f right now let's target the green dot so we'll just have preloader dot dot green and we'll set a background color of 06d6a0 right now let's target the yellow dot so we'll just have preloader dot dot yellow and set a background color of ffd166 right, so we have colored our dots now let's animate them so let's create an animation so we'll just type at keyframes and we'll just name the animation bounds now in the animation you can add percentages so if i type 50 percent and add some properties over here at the 50 percent of the timing of the animation those properties will be added to the element now at 50 percent we will add a transform translate y so we'll type transform translate y so this will move the dot up and down so let's set the transform value to 16 pixels and for 100 percent we will have a transform value of zero so in this way the dot will move up and down now let's add this animation to all of these dots so let's type animation and uh, let's call this animation over here so we'll just type bounce and we'll have the duration of the animation to 1000 milliseconds which is one second and it should run infinitely so we'll just type infinite so let's save it now we can see that the animation is working and the dot is moving up and down let's copy this same animation and add it to all the other dots so now we can see that all the dots are bouncing and uh, we have the animation for all the dots 
Now for the second and the third dots, we will have an animation delay. So this dot will animate first and then the second one and then the third one. So let's type animation delay and uh, we will set it to 200 milliseconds. And uh, for the last dot, we will set an animation delay of 400 milliseconds. And now we can see that the animation is working just like we want it to work. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to add a hide class to this preloader. Now the preloader will be displayed at the beginning, but uh, after some time we need to hide it. So for that we'll be adding a class to this preloader. So let's type preloader and uh, we will add a class called hide. So make sure that you don't have any space between preloader and hide. We need to have both these classes inside the division for it to work. So when we have the hide class for the preloader, we will set the opacity of the preloader to zero and we'll also set the pointer events to none. So when we have the hide class in the preloader, the preloader won't be displayed. And we'll also have a smooth transition between uh, both these states. So let's type transition and we'll set it to 400 milliseconds. Now the last thing to do is hide it after a certain period of time. So we'll use JavaScript for that. So we have already linked our JavaScript file over here. We can see script src main.js. So let's go to our JavaScript file and uh, we have to reference some of these elements. So let's go back and uh, here we can see we have this preloader class. So we have to reference this. So let's type const preloader and we'll type document dot query selector and here we'll type dot preloader. And uh, we'll also create a constant for the preloader duration. So let's type const preloader duration and we'll set it to 1500 for now. Right now we need to add an event listener to the window object. So let's type window dot add event listener and we have to add the event listener for the load event. So let's type load and here we'll call a function. So let's call the function hide preloader. We'll create this function in a minute. So here we can see when the page has been loaded, this load event will be fired. And after that, we need to execute this hide preloader function. So let's create the function over here. So let's type const hide preloader equals this function. So this is a new way to write function in JavaScript. Now in this function, we need to hide the preloader. So we have to add the class called hide that we have over here to the preloader. Now we'll set a timer for the preloader to hide. So after the page has loaded, we will wait for uh, this amount of time, which is preloader duration. And after that, we will hide the preloader. So let's type set timeout. And uh, in set timeout, you have to have a function over here. So we have created this arrow function. Now in the arrow function, we will just type preloader.classlist.add and we'll add the hide class. And for the timeout, we will have a timeout of preloader duration. So after this many seconds, the preloader will have the hide class. So it will disappear. So now let's save it and see whether it works. And we can see after 1500 milliseconds, which is 1.5 seconds, the preloader has disappeared. Now I have added a lot of delay over here. You shouldn't add this much delay to your pages. But since we are just testing this and I wanted to show you the animation for a long time, so I just added this. Typically your pages are a little bit more heavy and it will take more time to load. So you don't need to add a lot of preloader duration. So you can just set it to 500 or something like that. But this page is loading too quickly. So I just added this uh, preloader duration to 1500. It's up to you. You can add any number of duration you want. All right, so this is how the preloader works for your website. Let's refresh this page once more. And let's maximize it and let's refresh it once more. So that's basically how you create a preloader for your website from scratch. Now in the next video, I'll show you how to add this to your blogger website. So I will also leave the link of the source code in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and check that out. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.
Thank you.